Good morning, eighth graders. We have temporarily kidnapped your teachers and have infiltrated your scheduled assembly on dress code compliant footwear to bring you the following public service announcement. Over the next several minutes, we'll teach you how to survive your upcoming four year nightmare. So please listen closely while we change your life. Presenting for the first and only time, high school is easy for some and hard for others. Sometimes we wish that there was someone out there to lend us a helping hand. And there's not. In this piece by Jonathan Rand, a couple high schoolers help eighth graders learn what it's like to really go through high school alone and how to succeed in high school without, without really trying. A, B, C, kids, kids, one, two, three. Lesson one Home room. The beginning of every student's day is the simplest, yet there is one crucial component that must be handled with great care. Attendance! If you miss too many days, it can mean trouble. Which is why we recommend a simple... workaround. And that is? Legally change your name to what? Here is how it works. Once your name is changed to what, if you can't make it to roll call, it's no problem. Your trap has already been set. <sighs> Robert Frost? Present. Jennifer Wilkins? Present. Erica Weinstein? Here. What? I said here. Okay. <sighs> Without breaking a sweat, you've got yourself a completely devoted and unaware accomplice thanks to Erica Weinstein. Other than what, there are a wide variety of names to choose from, such as huh? Sorry, and repeat what you said a second ago. However, be sure to proceed with caution. Such name changes may have confusing ramifications later on in life. Hello, 911 emergency response. Hello, I'm sorry, my wife's having a baby. Okay, stay calm, sir. What's your wife's name? That's right. Sorry? Yes. Who's having a baby? My wife. And what is her name? Uh-huh. I'm sorry. You're sorry too? This is confusing. So you're saying we're both sorry? I'm saying I'm what? Wait, are you what or sorry? I get it. Your names are what and sorry. That's amazing. I did the same thing when I was in high school. <laughs> no kidding. What's your name? Say that again. What's your name? Say that again. What's your name? My name is... Say that again. My wife's having to be... Get the ambulance, lady. Oh, okay. A, B, C. It's easy. It's one, two, three. Lesson two, English. English. There's only one rule in the English class. And that is, no matter what you say, say it with 100% confidence. It's basically the golden rule in the English class. You don't even have to understand what you're saying, as long as you pretend like you mean it with all your heart. And it works for whatever literature is being discussed. Whenever any of the following themes are being mentioned, <laughs> sadness, darkness, oh, it does. Raise your hand and say, that's a metaphor for death. And if there's a mother in it, mention fraud. Fraud. And no matter who the protagonist is, claim that they're a Christ figure. Amen. Here are some examples. Stroking your chin. Nodding. Stroking your chin while you're nodding. And whenever possible, mention the word juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. For example. It is positively fraudy. Freudian. How the Christ-like protagonist is juxtaposed. Juxtaposed? What's that albatross? Albatross? Of death. This also works for many literatures that teachers require students to recite aloud in class. So whether it's Wordsworth or Shakespeare, the golden rule still applies. No matter what you say, Say with 100% confidence. If you don't understand the material or aren't prepared, just say it with mysterious intensity. Bonus tip. Add random pauses and punctuation with a capital P. It'll make you seem like you know a lot more than you actually do. Take Robert Frost, for example. Two roads diverged in the only way. And I could not. I stood to wear a bit beneath the undergrowth. The undergrowth. This works for anything ever written, so feel free to try it home with more familiar material. 
now that it's raining more than ever, we know that we still have each other. You can stand under my umbrella. You can stand under my umbrella. Hella, hella, a, 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 b, c. Time limitations, we're unable to cover all four languages, so we're required to draw from this random box that we have. And today's language is French. French! Now, don't worry, this still applies with all the other languages. So, if we're ever in a spot where you don't know what to say, just rattle off some random words anyone would know. Take this class presentation on Parisian travel, for example. Bonjour! Presentation voila! Petty! Um, Petty. Disneyland France! Les Moto 6! Brunette! Baguette! Garçon! Petite Garçon! Deja vu! Les Moto 6! Angelina Jolie! Merci, Merci beaucoup! On guard! Yeah, that's all it takes. It's as simple as that. But if you're ever caught in a spot where your teacher doesn't doesn't buy it? You're prepared. Madam Osel, your presentation was a disaster. All you did was rattle off some random words to any woman, no. Touche. A, B, C, A, B, C, it's one, two, three. Lesson four. Science. Science. Some teachers use what's called mnemonics to help students remember scientific concepts. Mnemonics are common phrases that jog the memory. For example, to help students remember taxonomic classification. All they have to remember is, King Philip came across from Great Spain. A phrase that regularly comes up in everyday conversation. Hey Carl, what's up? Not much. King Philip came over from Great Spain. <laughs> okay, cool. See you later. Other than that, we find that these phrases are outdated and thus inefficient. Which is why we recommend new and improved versions. For things such as the nature kingdoms, just remember, my poor friend picks apples. Um, to remember the four DNA components, just think. These apples taste crunchy. And they sure do. A, B, C, it's easy as one, two, three. Lesson five, history. history. Now, what is something in history that's Hard. The answer, of course, is dates. That's right, dates. And we're not talking about the kind of dates you go in with that weird girl from down the street. Bye. We're talking about moments in history, people. And there are a lot of moments in history that you have to remember. Like, how many wars and revolutions have there been? I don't know, a lot. I'm assuming like four. Here's a real-life example of an American history exam. When was the Battle of Appomattox? A. 1861 B. 1863 Or C. 1865 Hard to know. You've got all these random dates going on inside your brain. Bye. Which is why we recommend an easier version of study. Notice a common thread among these dates? They all have 1, 8, 6. That's right, so all you need to remember is Appomattox and five. Only two words. So when you're studying, you're going to cut down your study session from one hour to 15 minutes. Which is a blessing by the Lord. Declaration! Six. Moon. Uh, nine. Watergate. Three. It's that simple. Two digits is all you need. A, B, C, it's easy as one, two, three. Now guys, we've made it to the end of our presentation. But I feel like we're forgetting something. That's right, math! Gem. You're going to fail math and gym anyways. We did as well. But we hope that you at least tried to pass your high school courses with flying colors. And if you don't, well, we're sorry. No, I'm sorry! This has been How to Succeed in High School Without Really Trying. Your